doing some work in the electronics lab tonight and finally had some success. I've been working on this for a while and we've got two, actually technically three vacuum tubes here. First off we have the 0D3 regulator. This is a gas filled regulator. It's kind of like an NE2 bulb except for it kicks on at about 150 volts. Uh, if you really want to talk about it in a modern sense, you would think Zener diode or something like that. It's going to kick on and conduct current whenever you actually have a voltage above what it's supposed to be. Besides that, we have a dual section tube. There is a triode and there is a beam pentode in there or a beam tetrode. Something along those lines. It's a 6LU8 or a similar pinout, and I've got a couple of these that aren't marked really well, but they do work, so, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty tolerant design, it seems. And what it does, though, is it uses the triode section of the tube at biased below the middle potential, which would actually be your neutral, your ground in this case, to effectively create a path through the pentode as a rectifier. So you have positive voltage on the plate, and then what happens is you have your load on the other side, and it effectively just acts as a diode with the control grid in it. So if you want a certain voltage, what will happen is you'll actually have feedback from the voltage circuit into the potentiometer here. That will feed to the grid of the triode, and it affects whenever it cuts on or off based off of your you know, precision source, if you will. Well, as precision as that's going to be, but the idea, though, is you end up with some sort of regulated voltage. Where I initially found this circuit was um, Peter Millet's page, and whenever I found it there, it was in the form of a monstrous 807-based unit. It did a half amp at about 500 volts, all that kind of stuff, and I just wanted to scale it down and try it a little bit. Um, his circuit's also based off of the Heathkit IP17 power supply, which is 6L6 based. They both use a pentode to actually do the controlling, so whenever it feeds voltage into the grid of the pentode here, that's done through the plate of the triode, and it's directly attached, actually. Which is really interesting because we think of most types of tube interconnections as capacitor coupled. So, if you actually go through here and we look at it, the voltage comes in here. That's the plate of the that's the plate of the beam tetrode right there. It connects through a grid. It connects through a 270k resistor here. Now I made some substitutions to the circuits, so that's going to be what it is. That's what happens when you work out of your junk box. And what I did there was I it actually connects over here and then it connects to the control grid over here, which is pin 6 and 7 of the pentode. So normally whenever the grid is, whatever the grid's conducting, what will happen is though is it's going to pull down the voltage across this to below the triode turning on. Whenever the voltage gets above the, whenever the voltage gets above a certain point though, it's going to actually keep the tube from conducting though by pulling it down into bias voltage. So effectively you're using the triode as an inverter of sorts, if you will. And the other thing though is this is actually a less sophisticated design than the Heathkit probably because it's got two tubes in parallel. And it's based off of an HP 400B VTVM power supply, I'm wanting to say. I'll, I got a link, I'll put it up in the... Um, I'll put it up in the description, and then that way, if you want to play with it yourself, you can. Uh, the reason I did this, though, was I wanted something where I could actually control the voltage easily of the power supply I'm using. And I might eventually build a tube uh, transistorized substitute of this so that I can just have a little bit simpler of a circuit in terms of cleanliness and filaments and stuff like that. But this works fine. Uh, it lets me drop oh, about a 100 volt swing, plus or minus a little bit. So, let's turn her on. And I'm going to do that. We're going to let the filaments heat up. And as the filaments heat up, uh, the OD3 tube should kick on here in a moment. Whenever it starts conducting. Obviously, you got to wait for the cathode. I mean, ah, there we go. You're nice. 45 or 60 second or whatever it is to warm up. So, OD3 is on now. And if you notice up here, my voltage has gone to 300 volts. The scale's at 2x because I'm on 500 volts right now, not 250 just because obviously it's a 260 so you gotta do what you gotta do. 
Well, the thing is, is that this is full conduction for this is full con this is full range for the circuit, so that's the high voltage. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take off the meter. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put it on the actual source right here, which you can see. And it comes out to about 320, 340, or something like that. So I'm losing 30, 40 volts probably ish on the um, on the circuit. Going back over here though, all I have to do now is take my potentiometer down here and then I can drop this down and it goes down to say 130 ish volts I need to play with it a little bit more but it's pretty cool and it definitely works so yeah, that's, that's it for now and I'll post some updates eventually with load testing